Hey guys, welcome to Overcrest. I'm Chris. Jake. Hey guys. What? Did you not did you not hear me say No, hey I, guys? I didn't hear anything. I did not hear anything from you. I heard the music. So it was great. We're off, we're off to a great start. <laughs> I heard nothing. Like you were just there. Oh you were just God. standing still. It was really uh, good. I was like, oh, you're, maybe you're, maybe I'm doing the intro this time. I think your internet. It's must not be you always blame river. me. It's Dude, not I mine. just had I just I can hear to the Patrick music Long. fine. Yeah, because those th dude. I just, I've had multiple interviews. You're the only one. I know, it's. You're the only one. So it's you. It's, 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 you live in the middle of nowhere in a van down by the river, essentially. Except it's actually a really a nice house down by the river. And I do have a river. Yeah. So that's accurate. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. 100%. Well, just I'm Jake. Just wait till Jake. you get in trouble with. You are Jake. You are Jake. I've got a right. How's it fun uh, situation lined up for us today. Situation. And I, I okay. cursed myself. A little bit by hold on, let me let me turn my heater off. It's gonna be loud. Oh boy. Okay, here we go. Uh there we go. Uh oh yeah, that is better. I was skeptical yeah. we could hear it. I was yeah, skeptical. A little bit yeah, of, yeah, no, that was good. That's good. A little bit okay. of a little bit of heater like Anyway, so I've been uh, you have a trying situation. to think of some topics. I have a situation and I okay. cursed myself by um launching myself into a black hole. Oh, with with, uh, with a question I've got for you. And I, I gave it to you the other day so you could kind of maybe think I of your did, own. I did, and I I didn't do, like, probably the the different, like, tentacles of research. I was thinking, like, Ugh, you know, you go down the man. rabbit hole. But this is, the like, rabbit multiple hole. rabbit holes, right? Yeah, this so was, I didn't this, go down I, any I rabbit holes. Into a black hole. My question but, was, if you could take any object back in time to show a previous historical period, what would it be and when? Right. Do you want to go and first, or do you want really, me to go first? Really good question. Well, let me just tell you a little bit about my thought process here. Okay. Okay. Because it kind of ranges the gamut. When you say any object, you think technology first, right? Like, yeah. I could yep. bring my iPhone back, and they'd be amazed at like they yeah. can watch videos and stuff. But Your it's tendency also, is to turn yourself. It's 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 to look inward at this and turn yourself into a god. Basically, is like yeah. what could I take back? And then I would just either get burned at the stake or I would run the world. I'd be God. I would run the yes. world. Like if you took an iPhone back and it had like a copy of Wikipedia on it, you would be God. Yes. That's so the tendency. Here's, well, here's the problem because there is a Arthur C. Clarke quote. Okay. And it says. Who's uh, Arthur? Who is that? Who's Arthur C. Clarke? Uh, da, 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 da. he is, I think, a historian or okay. Basically, you're, the quote you're, you're is you're giving any... us a quote from a guy you don't even know who he is. I Here's no a idea. quote from a guy. No. He's a science yeah. fiction Let writer, just tell an you... avid okay, popular a popularizer of space travel and futurist. I love futurist. Yeah, he's that guy. That guy. Yeah, but here's guy. this quote. Got it. Any sufficiently advanced technology will be indistinguishable from magic. So here's right. the risk that you run is if you bring something like an iPhone or something that is too far beyond understanding, you're just going to get burnt at the stake. They're going to be, oh, yeah, that's witchcraft. Dead. That's you're magic. Witch. That's not think? impressive. That's not impressive. It's just scary and we don't like it. Right. Yeah. So you're going to sink you when you get take thrown that in the water into context right you probably will and so it's like okay that's computer slash you know iphone or something like yeah, that can't and take I was the like, iphone you could just bring a lighter back to like way prehistoric caveman times but that's not very impressive yeah. because they had like cauldrons where they'd bring coals around and they harnessed fire right yeah and so then i thought okay what about like like machinery okay mm -hmm. so anything yeah. from weaponry so like a gun like you oh, could God. just go to some I did, whatever you know pick a battle anytime in history and you just have like a machine gun and you're just like hi look i win i win I bring an m249 as long as I, saw back to the crusade as long as you bring enough <laughs> ammo you win yeah right yeah so they have no concept of ammo though so you could like do it once and just be and like, they would just ah yes yeah, but yeah, also yeah. would they even understand Again, magic. Like, that thing's loud and it's making us die do they even know that it's bullets and comprehend that yeah no, that might just be god magic. You're just guy. Right. So, and then there's another concept that you brought up or are Jake, going to question, question, that question. I didn't think. Hold on. What would your what? throne look like? <laughs> would be very tall, Chris. Very high up the ground. Big 
Yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. going to make you look yeah. smaller, Jake. That's not what you want. <laughs> that's that's not good. I feel like I would have, I would have like, I would go back to a period of time, and I would. It, let's. I'm trying to think of my period of time. Maybe now. Nah, right. I just want because, Leonardo da Vinci to to design my throne. I want it to be like some sort of recliner. So you're going to the Renaissance. I don't think recliners. Yeah, I'm going to go with Renaissance, and I don't think recliners existed. In the Renaissance, they had rocking chairs. I'm Ooh, sure, just but they didn't have a like a lazy boy. boy. Yeah, that would be my <laughs> recliner. It's a lazy like, boy from Fraser. That, hold on, that's the technology. That's the object yes. you're bringing back. You're just Moving bringing on. the chair, that's and you're it. like, wait, hold on, let me pull this lever. Cha chang! Everyone's and, like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the lazy boy the best Chris invention of the 20th the lazy century lazy boy back <laughs> to the renaissance period i love that very much no the the other thing that i hadn't thought of until you brought it up is medicine right like mm -hmm. healthcare yeah. bringing penicillin. anything like that back it's the thing just, is is that if you brought penicillin somewhere and i i dove deep into penicillin okay so i was like okay. my my th my rule for this that i created for myself to try and tone it down a little bit because it's just it's it's just spider webs, like you said, is it has to be able to be recreated with technology. I have a whole separate document here that you can't see because I didn't want you to know. Okay. Yeah, no, but that's fine. Have, it has to be, you have to be able to bring the object back and mm -hmm. they have to be able to recreate it with the technology they have on hand. Why? So you have to be able to teach, because I think otherwise, like you said, it, you're God or it's magic. Okay, so okay. I, I'm trying to figure out a way that we can mass produce something, right? Let's bring something back that's advanced technology that can be mass produced in an, you, an older period of time. Sure. Did you also go down the rabbit hole of thinking about what the butterfly effect of whatever this is would be? I did. I did. I yeah. went and I said, what can we I said, what can we take back in time in my head? I'm like, what can we take back in time that would prevent iPhones from ever being invented? Like what <laughs> object could goal. I take back? OK, yeah. Don't but then no, I went. Well, who cares it's iPhones. About it's, war, it's the genocide, transistor. War, Colin, genocide. Novel. Like, well, his, yeah, okay. I mean, Hitler, I mean, eh, the, the iPhone has iPhone. been iPhone. a huge problem. Social media. It is a problem. problem. All this it is, is a problem. problem. So I went back and I'm like, how can we prevent the transistor from being uh, invented? And I'm like, ah, oh, we'd have to invent. I mean, we're going to get there anyway. Like human beings are going to get to that point anyway. But if we could figure out a way to have like mechanical computers or something like that well, to kind of prevent us from. Have those you would be heard such a huge the scale. conspiracy theory that transistors are technology from aliens and. The reason that this is thought of is you look at the development of any type of like electronics that we had. There was such a huge leap with the development of the transistor that yeah. it was mind blowing. you right. All of a sudden it went from tubes to transistors and it was like that that and then it went to microcircuitry and microprocessors. Yeah. That leap of technology. They're like, how is this attributed looking at the yeah, grand it's scale like of the things. best example of aliens. this is the um it could be it could be aliens why not yep. but the the yep. f14 tomcat is a huge okay. example of this and i, I do my brain is is last couple of weeks it's just been like all I over the this. place i love this but okay, like the let's go. you went from tube technology in like the 50s into the 60s yep. and then all of a sudden you're inventing the f14 tomcat that has a flight computer it has right. a legitimate yeah. flight computer and it has a processor way before intel mm -hmm. did anything this f-14 huh. had a processor that would control like really? the wings the swept wings and stuff like that yeah super fascinating i'd love to hear you do a do an episode on f-14 so then i went back and i sent an email to jet crouch and um uh yes. scott stimpert one two of our guests that both flew the f-117a i'm like hey yeah. do you know anybody that used to drive the f or drive yeah they call it drive, drive. drive the f-14 <laughs> yeah. it's weird when you talk to pilots sometimes they say drive like, oh, I drive the, they don't say fly, they say drive. It's really strange. Um, okay. It's, it's, it's worth a, worth Maybe a question like of a, why like they a, do that. A cool, yeah, I don't know. It's cooler to say that. Everyone says fly, so they're like, something. I drive that. Or just use a, just use a different it's like, word. It's like, it's like you, don't, you don't drive a motorcycle or operate a motorcycle. You're like, I ride. I ride. You don't, you know, though. Instead you of don't that, ride. When you go you for drive. a ride to do something, you're along for the ride. When you That's go on I'm a saying. ride, like, ride isn't accurate, but a motorcyclist will always say, "Well, it's not completely instead inaccurate. of driving or operating my motorcycle, I'm riding." Kids are so. weird too. Like they they take words. <laughs> uh, and, kids and they, are and, kids these and they, days. <laughs> they look at the words literally. Like we were looking at, we were watching YouTube and we watch science stuff on YouTube all the time, and it was something about um, gases, right? And Irene just goes, "Why is why is it called gas? It's not a gas." 
right? And I'm thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, well, it's just short for gasoline. But we call it gas instead right. of gas. We should just yes. call it no. fuel. We should call I, it fuel. I actually, but it, I do anytime I can just say fuel. I need yeah, fuel. but then people do think you you're fuel? talking about diesel. Not necessarily. Diesel's a type mm. of fuel. Kerosene know, is a type of fuel. I agree, but it's kind of, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, continue with your thought process and what you came up with. I just, I honestly kind of stumbled. Like, I did, okay, so it's it's either going to be, like, it's got to be something mechanical, like you say, so it can be understood, whether that is to reproduce or not. I don't know. Um, so, like, helicopter would be pretty cool. But I, here's the other thing. Jesus. Can you so, personally, a- can you personally, like, operate it, right? You have to be able to operate this machine to show what it is. Otherwise, just, like, look at the big metal thing. And they're it's like, also a very large shiny. time machine to transport the uh, the helicopter. It's going to lead you made a, lot a more DeLorean energy. into a time machine. <laughs> um, so you didn't it's come up the with perfect structure. It. You, you I, hit a dead I end. thought like I, I think I think some type of flying machine would actually be the best. And you bring it back to Renaissance period, because like you're talking about Leonardo da Vinci had like the sketches of like his flying machines and they like yeah. tried taping wings to people and that didn't work well. So I think if you showed up with that, you'd be like, look, here's how it mechanically works. You'd have to have like a pre-war machine or something more simple. So there's not a lot of computers and stuff in it. And that hopefully I'd my brain just went to how you could bring a helicopter back. And what would Leonardo da Vinci build once he saw the technology? And I was trying to think of how would you how would you get energy to run a helicopter? How mm-hmm. would Leo, I was thinking, could you have could you have a rubber band? Did they have rubber? I don't no. know if they had rubber. No, they yeah, did. It's, it's really tough. So that's that was my thought process is, did they have rubber? Did they have these things? Could they have made I, this? I guess I don't understand why you need to have it mass produced. Oh, right. To get to the point where we don't have iPhones for some reason. That's going to no, prevent that. No, I just was trying to like narrow. I was trying to create rules where it would become easier to like land okay. on something. Yes. So I okay. landed well, on. I'm, I'm bringing I'm bringing an aircraft. You're bringing a helicopter. I'm yep. bringing a simple electric motor back to the 18th hmm. century into the 1700s. OK, a simple electric motor because they could build it copper iron they could make the windings they had copper they had uh uh-huh. they had lead they had all these different things they had graphite uh-huh. right so you could mm-hmm. do brushes if you wanted to you could make a simple electric motor and then i'm like awesome how do they power it <laughs> yeah it enter the voltaic pile have you ever heard of a yes. voltaic pile yeah. i have yes yeah so basically we have alessandro volta who in his uh-huh. relentless pursuit to one up his uh his competitor Louis Luigi Galvani have you ever heard of him <laughs> No I have not Luigi Galvani which I wonder if it has anything to do with like galvanic I wonder if he cuz some of this stuff is kind of yep. yeah kind of kind of related with electricity For he was sure. then at the time dabbling uh in dead frog electricity So basically well, okay. what he would do yeah he would he would cut <laughs> <laughs> he would take a frog dead. Yeah, okay hold on hold on big big dick energy nah dead frog energy man dead frog energy. <laughs> yeah then he would dissect a frog's legs leaving them attached to the body but separated from the rest of the frog so like the leg is like just hanging off so then he would is hang the, the frog alive uh no the frog is dead and okay, well, before you good. ask he did do this with bigger animals but uh Anyway, uh, he would next. So he would then he would take a scalpel and you would see the sciatic nerve right from the spine Mm -hmm. going through into Mm -hmm. the leg. Mm -hmm. And he would take like a a scalpel, like two scalpels, and he would touch like a metal railing with like uh, another piece of metal. And when he did that and he touched the nerve, it would twitch, even Ah. though the frog was dead. Um, Galvani observed that these muscle contractions occur without any external stimulation other than the contact between the metals and the frog tissue. And he what this is, is essentially the Frankenstein frog. Frankenstein is. frog. Yeah. Well, the frog's the Frankenstein. He's just Galvani. Frankenstein is, was the doctor, not the monster. Or is it vice versa? Frank, yeah, Dr. Dr. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Oh, yeah, the monster was right. just called the monster. Yeah. When are we going to see a reboot of Frankenstein? Is that coming soon? That's a good I point. I feel like that just happened. We haven't over seen that. Again. Maybe it hasn't. Not really. Like, When's the last like, time you've seen a, a Frankenstein? I don't know. It's well, almost never. So this yeah. is basically galvanic. The same process that causes galvanic corrosion is what's causing this. It's the dissimilar metals are causing uh-huh. the electrolyte, which is like the tissue and the blood in the frog yeah. to react. And it causes like an electronic 
um, current. Yeah. Volta, uh, anyway, Volta, a man of reason and science, refused to believe Galvani's claim that electricity was a biological phenomenon unique to living tissue. This is my rabbit hole. Okay, this is my this I is the it. black I'm, hole that I'm I launched myself so into. So into it. Yes. Instead, he set out to prove that electricity could be generated chemically. The result Ooh. was the voltaic pile. Sophisticated yeah. at the time, now it's very rudimentary. Yeah. A stack of alternating zinc and copper discs separated yep. by pieces of cardboard that were soaked in salty water. Salty water was the electrolyte. The pile produced yes. electricity through a chemical reaction between the metals and the electrolyte, a kind of energy generation that didn't require any dead amphibians. <laughs> Volta's I innovation just, wasn't... I'm you know what sucks? This came up, out like a bunch of... I just want to see, like, instead of that, this galvanized guy... He he just he just has a whole line of frogs hooked up with wires, dancing like, to yeah, music. Yeah, check with like this little out. with like little buttons where you can make their legs twitch, like they're on the stage with the. <laughs> no, I'm ladies. saying the frogs are p somehow powering his. Like he's making electricity via the frogs instead of this. Oh, you know, chemical. It would be yeah. it would be extreme millivolts. I did I did look into how. That's many why frogs you have a to... lot of frogs, Chris. A lot of them. It is it is not feasible. Uh, I, I looked in it. One of my favorite things to do with ChatGPT is like look into like obscure numbers. And I did that a little I, bit yeah, with this. But, but like how like many frogs not... would it take? There's no <laughs> amount of frogs that would run an electric motor. I already checked. It doesn't I, work. What, Jake. Did doesn't you ask work. it to cite its sources? Because I feel like sometimes you ask for those types of facts and it's like, actually, you're right. It's this yeah, one you can and not correct that it over one. And over and over yeah, okay. Anyways. So, so each metal in the pile acted as an electrode with the zinc undergoing oxidization and the copper mm -hmm. reduction, driving electrons around the circuit connected to the top and the bottom of the pile, causing current flow. This it's flow of electric electrons exactly. It is a battery, which is what I needed to run my electric motor that I brought or, back with me. Or you could just have two motors and one is hooked up to hydroelectricity, like a river. You could, yes, but I'm. That'd be a lot go, easier. It would. It be, would be a lot easier. But then you might as well just run it off the stupid, the windmill or the water wheel. You mm, might as well just use yeah, that. Whatever you are doing. Like, That's how long is your extension cord going to be to to <laughs> to power the electric motor? Um, and mm. at some point, they didn't have like strands of wire either, so you would have been running a solid right. copper wire, which would have been a hideous amount of resistance. Uh, yes. given over over a certain amount of distance. Uh, what Volta essentially introduced was the concept of the battery, which yeah. not only revolutionized yeah. science, but also gave people a new way to accidentally shock themselves while experimenting. The voltaic what, what, piles... Did what year was this, Circa? Do you have the dates? 1798, which sucks wow. because guess who died two years before he invented this? Leonardo? Galvani died. No, Galva oh. yeah, Galvani died. The frog guy. Frog guy ate the dust. He could have uh, made his, his frogs like dance really really well if he combined the battery with the frogs think about that so what do you think they can build using a voltaic pile and an electric motor what do you think they can power oh man what can't they power chris i mean it depends how well, big the voltaic pile is let's let's get i mean into they're it. gonna build a car they're gonna build a car we're gonna build a car chris let's get into it i thought maybe we could just do huge voltaic piles but turns out the more plates you stack it just generates more voltage and the amperage does not change. Hmm. Okay. So there's there's no additional amperage, which is the problem. I figured out what the largest voltaic pile that could be feasibly built in the 18th century is about 100 feet tall. It would have 10,000 voltaic plates. But okay. that 10,000 cells would still only produce about one milliampere under ideal conditions. That's it? That's it. Each plate would probably produce about 0.76 volts. So that's 7,600 volts. But we know um, that's really only yeah, going to be 7.6 watts because watts okay. is amps times voltage. Yep, so 7 which watts. Is okay. lame. And then I'm that like, okay, lame. well, that doesn't work. It, it powers nothing. Not even a dentist I mean, drill. No dentist drill. Yeah. No, it doesn't do anything. It literally, mm. it can't like like a little pinwheel. You're not doing it much. It would be like yeah, a, a novelty much. experiment. You can't do anything. Um, so then I thought about like, could they do a lead acid battery, right? It yep. would, uh, which you could, you could technically do uh, a lead acid battery, but I kind of just turns out this is all just like a terrible idea and <laughs> none of this would work. And then I 
that was it. That's as far as I as as far as I got with this experiment. Oh, so, that was it. Okay, so I ran out so of you're time. Not bringing, you're not bringing the electric motor then. Not bringing the electric motor, and then you're I did also think boy. about. Um, I thought about different uh, metallurgical processes too, um, alloys. Um, yeah. I thought about explosion welding. Have you ever heard of explosion welding? Explain it to me. Have you ever heard of like clad, like clad plates for like high pressure containers? Okay. So basically what they do is they take like, and you can, you can explode, explode weld. You can explosion weld steel and aluminum, for example. Okay. They, they would never go together. So what they do is they take these plates. Are you just calling forge welding? Uh, no, it is not forge welding. What they do is they take these big plates of steel uh -huh. and they set it on the ground and then they uh -huh. like they spot weld like little nubs on it. Okay. And then they put a plate of aluminum or iron or else, any metal you want. Anything. Brass, uh -huh. you could okay. well brass okay. might sure. not survive. But it was all these different kinds of metals that you could do. And then you take explosive and you brush it out like two inches thick on three inches thick on top of these two metals. Uh -huh. And then you just blow it up. And the force, this, you look, you're so skeptical, but this is this is absolutely a process. This is how is and this the, not different than just taking a hammer and forging the two metals together? Because it happens so fast that it forces all the air molecules out and becomes a, a clean, strong weld. It, it physically welds them together. The force is so insane that it welds them together and the force of them coming together because it goes from uh -huh. one end to the other. So they start the explosion at one end okay. and it rapidly goes across the, the plate of steel or aluminum or whatever. It Are is there you're videos of this? Together. Yeah. 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 Go, okay. go look it up. Yeah, you, can, gonna, you, can, yep. you can find it. Um, and, and it rapidly goes across. So then as it goes across, it welds. And this all happens so fast that you can't even see it. The weld goes across the whole plate and it pushes the air out, which means it is then a clean weld. And this is what they use for like high pressure tanks for like chemicals and stuff like that is what clad is for. Really? So I, but anyway, okay. I thought about bringing like different metal. Yeah, what are you going to do with technically that? Technically do that. Okay. Well, you could make you could make a you could make a steam engine with a clad metal barrel that would then be able to withstand extreme temperatures and generate way more horsepower than any steam engine ever. And you could do that in the 18th century. You could have uh, for you could bring forging. You could bring you could do welding because you're certainly not welding with a voltaic plate. That's that, that would be like shocking somebody with your finger like this, I don't yeah, even think just, you'd, 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 you'd static really, welding. Is that a thing? You really? Uh, yeah. Anyway, okay, I'm going to share. That's it. I'm I'm ra share I ran this. out of time. OK, what do you got? OK, but I, I really want to see what this whole explosion welding process is all about. Let's see if How you can hear this? this three minutes. I don't know. I cannot hear it, but you can see it. And that's what well, I'll you use. don't I already really need it. to. What what are we doing here? So it's in that tunnel uh, is where they do it. They do it inside of a mountain. Look at that. It fuses dissimilar metals together. And then they basically take oh. this um, and they build like high pressure stuff out of it. Like high pressure. Oh, is this the, uses. Wow. Look at that. See? That's what? See? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was full of shit. And lo and behold, I, was, there I, like, I don't understand how this is better than. Okay. Interesting. And they mill it flat. Really? Yep. The backer. Okay. Yep. I just, oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. This is what yeah, I was there, looking there for. There it is. See, that's the slow motion. Bam, boom. It blows up. And then. And then it slowly yeah. goes over there, pushing slowly. out all the air you molecules. You say slowly, but I think it's not slow. Well, it's light speed, however, however long the... Lights? Uh, it's not light speed. What's the chemical reaction speed of something like this? It depends to light? on the chemical. It's light speed. See, there's it the is air not light speed. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Stop sharing yeah. this. We got to move on. No, I'm just... Got, yeah, those are... Okay. That's, I guess, fast. It's a really cool process. And uh, you know what else is cool, Jake? Well... AC Solutions is cool. That's what's cool. AC Solutions, which is our friend Austin Cacavo. You heard him on the podcast recently. They offer complete plug-and-play air conditioning conversion kits for your classic BMW, such as the E30, E28, and E24, and soon-to-be Porsche, featuring OEM quality components with period-correct finishes and materials. Their products are designed as drop-in upgrades to your old factory system, but with the performance of modern technology. Their products stem from hands-on design and development with a deep knowledge and passion for these vehicles. They're designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts and can complete with a full warranty 
and quality instructions mirroring those of a factory panel. Check them out at acsolutions.co. That's acsolutions.co. All right, I'm going to show you something. I want you to tell me what this is. Let me see if I can grab it, share it quick. Can you see this? That is a Ferrari 308, I think, 308. Okay, that is a Ferrari. Please let the judge note. 328, 348. Three, it's a 308. Three, it's, well, you oh, say it's yeah. a 308. Okay, let the audience know that Jake has decided sure. this is a I think a most people would think that's a 308. Sure. That is a, that is a Ferrari. Yeah, that's what I said. 308. No, it is yeah. not. It is a Mira kit car uh, made out of a Fiero. And this is something that GM mm. uh, GM mm. actually built on the side. The reason it's I bring that up. It's supposed to look like a 308, right? Well, it's an extremely good kit car. Anyway, I wanted to, yeah. I wanted to show that before I okay. showed you the, uh, the Craigslist car of the week. Oh, boy. Which, or if, oh, come on, man, load. Is this really going to do this to me right now? Here it goes. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is, all right, let me share this. This is the uh, car for sale of the week. Okay. Are we seeing it? I'm not seeing it. You should be seeing it now. Okay. Okay. 1984 Lamborghini wow. Countach replica. Um, this is also. Oh, I've, see, I've seen this. I know this guy. I talked to this guy. Come on. No, I know exactly where this is. I've seen this car. I've talked to this guy. Okay, well, take it away, Jake. I guess I don't, I don't know. I don't know. This, this like, was this was a long time ago. I drove by and I was like, "What the hell?" And he's like, "Yep, yeah, it's a Fiero kit car." Um, oh, sample picture of car style. Do you see? It? <laughs> Did you click through? Sorry, I can't see what you're sharing. So, I'm oh, it, it is pictures of this thing. It is pictures yep. of this thing. It's but did you click through? Yeah, style. sample picture. Yeah. Well, that's not. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's so terrible, Chris. Please note. Yeah. Replica cars are not the actual Lamborghini Countach car, which can cost up to five hundred thousand dollars. So just uh -huh. in case, just in case you were just wondering, just in case you were confused, he's he's yeah. he's laying it out. Yep. Oh man. <sighs> Details. Color. Red. Two doors. Six cylinder. Yeah. Runs and drives. Ninety percent. Look at the windows. When we you took Apple, this car you to Apple a car fans? show. You yeah. Apple podcast fans need to hop over and start listening to this on Spotify so you can see this stuff every once in a while. We, we want you that to listen sense. to the podcast, of course, but, you know, there's video there if you, if you want. It's also. just terrible. Uh, um, runs and drives. Okay. About 80% okay. of the custom build work is done, although it, although it needs some more work done. About three years ago, it felt like the front passenger yeah, side wheel bearing started wearing <laughs> and brake line out. Will need to be towed uh, to buyer's location. Needs front wheel bearing, some brake line work, a radio, Maybe a new water line, instrument panel, door, and more. That's it. All of this <laughs> is, look at this one here, a real eye catcher. This thing is, well, ladies and gentlemen. Did you, Why are you the, forgot look at to the windows? Read. It's so bad. Well, there's one, there's one angle I'm looking at where the whole roof looks like it's just like not like fiberglass? being a, a, a roof. Like it's just sagging. However, please note that the seller said when we took the car to a car show near our house, people raced right past the shiny new Lamborghini cars to take a look at this much older model Lamborghini Countach replica car. Uh-huh. I'm sure they yeah. did. Because they yeah, were like, like, look they at that down. abomination. Look wow, at look at that. that car wreck. <laughs> we better slow down and see if anybody died. Oh, yeah. Which is, yeah, yeah. Pretty, much, pretty much what okay. this is. Okay, well. Um, yeah, yeah so no, the, I know uh, exactly where that guy is. I drove by. I stopped because I was like, what in the? Yeah. I wonder if he uses it to tow the little camper there. You might as well. You might as well. Okay, moving, moving on. Let's see if I can get back to my notes. Let's talk about some news, Chris. Yeah, let's talk some news. The Ford Bronco Sport owners are dealing with the latest recall totaling 22,270 units alongside the recall of 20,382 escapes, all due to the pesky issue of cracked fuel injectors. But mm. wait, there's more. On the very same day, the Bronco found itself in the headlines once again, <laughs> this time due to the passing of its most infamous owner, O.J. Simpson. So uh -huh. they announced the, uh, the recall and O.J. Simpson died at exactly the same time. I'm not sure if uh -huh. there's a coincidence for that or there's not. There's definitely a correlation. Sure. Yes. The juice, as he was affectionately known, has sadly, sadly, I don't know if it's sadly. He died. Um, sadly, he died. 
he, he's dead, has sadly, or maybe not sadly, left us at the age of 76 after a battle with cancer. I don't think anybody really knew he was dying. Uh, he was famous for his football skills and glove-related incidents. His most <laughs> lasting contribution to car culture was undoubtedly his leisurely cruise down a Los Angeles freeway in a white Ford Bronco in 1994. Um, do you remember he, this? He did some acting. He did some acting as well. Keep in mind. Hmm. Was it any? Was it true crime? Was it? Was he a murder? No, <laughs> no. He was in like a bunch of like Leslie, Niel- not Leslie Nielsen. Uh, 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 the comedy ones, like Naked Gun or whatever. What, uh, what is that dude named? That's is that Leslie Nielsen? Leslie Nielsen's the uh, no. He's the guy that's taken. I'm going to. Oh find yeah, him. The, the, yeah. That guy sucks. Um, The chase began when Al Cowling, Simpson's close friend and former teammate, picked him up from Simpson's home in Brentwood, Los Angeles, in Cowling's white Ford Bronco. I always thought this was uh, OJ's car, his truck. Yeah, I did too. It wasn't his truck. It was his buddy, AC, with Cowling behind the wheel and Simpson in the back seat. OJ and AC. (laughs) Yeah. This is following uh, AC Solutions. With Cowling's behind the wheel and Simpson in the back seat, the Bronco was spotted by the police who recognized Simpson and began pursuit. I'm going to have to interrupt this call. I understand we, we're going to go to a live picture in Los Angeles. Uh, is that- Look at that guy's face. Can you see this, Jake? No, I can't. Oh, such a, can you hear it, though? Yeah, I can. Okay, so if you're listening, just like Jake is, and he can't see it for some <laughs> damn reason, this is, uh, this is Larry King. He was previously interviewing this yeah. guy on the left who looks like he just, a naked man just walked right in front of him. He looks so perplexed and surprised. Correct. Okay, this is Interstate 5, and this is courtesy of KCALR, one of our L.A. affiliates. Police believe that that O.J. Simpson is in that car. Now they're telling me that they, be, they believe that this vehicle is registered to Al Cowling's, uh, one of uh, O.J.'s oldest friends, a teammate at Southern Cal. And they believe that Al Cowling, who's the other person they're looking for, who was with O.J. earlier today, they believe, again, they believe that this is the car. We do not know this is the car. So at the time, he had a, uh, he basically had a gun to his head the whole time. And I listened to the transcripts. He had a cell phone in there. And OJ's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't go back. And they're trying to get him to throw the gun out of the truck. And like, wow, it was, it was like, I didn't even want to play the audio because it was so, uh, it's so uncomfortable and weird. But how dope is this Bronco? Do you know what his Bronco looks like? The white Bronco with the yep. white matching. Oh, it's, it's, it's pretty dope. Car. They're going south through Orange County, but nobody is pulling this car over. And we could only guess as to why not. <laughs> this is an amazing sight uh, along the right-hand shoulder. People have pulled over, many of them carrying signs such as signs reading things like Save the Juice, Go OJ. People are literally cheering him on as he travels northbound on the 405, and we can only assume. So, so you can't see this. Okay, but what's tell me, happening tell is, me the context here of like why, why did the car chase start? They were trying to arrest him. Was this when he was right all lined up? He murders? was all lined up to like get dropped off with the uh, at the attorney general. He was all lined okay, up. And then so he this decided is to he decided to run. after the trial. Well, this is when he got charged. So he got, got charged it. with the charged. crime and got charged it. with the crime, and then he just lost his shit. Got it. So, what, so what's happening in the in the video now is you have. Everybody on the opposite side of the freeway is at a complete stop. Everybody is at a complete stop. So just imagine, this is this is the 90s. This is the early 90s. Everybody somehow found out about this and found out that it was happening. They're all listening to the radio. This is pre-cell phone. Nobody's tweeting about this. Everybody's yeah. just finding out about it uh, from analog sources, which I think is really fascinating. That word was able to yeah, spread this fast where people are pulling True. over on the side of the freeway with signs that say, save OJ. Yeah. We assume that he plans to get off at sunset and go towards perhaps his home. He's on the off ramp now coming up, uh, coming up the off ramp uh, at sunset. That's I mean, people were on bridges with now, signs you know, as he went under. Uh, making, it's just crazy. Uh, making a left turn. The, the intersection is uh, free and he's clear and now making his he- left turn. 
So he went home and basically wow. went to his house and they they arrested him there. And, you know, it, it was no big deal. But as news of the chase spread, it was broadcast on live television with news helicopters following the Bronco. And I was wondering, was like the helicopter car chase thing that's going on in Los Angeles all the time? There's always like if you tune in, there's always some guy running from the cops. Did that exist okay. before this? Did OJ force Start. this phenomenon? <laughs> this slow speed chase I, yeah, lasted for over two Hours, Jake, and it captivated viewers from across the country and marked the beginning of a saga that would dominate headlines for months to come. The Bronco itself became a symbol of that turbulent time, forever linked to the events surrounding Simpson's trial and the subsequent trial of the century. After the chase, the Bronco was impounded by the police and later returned to Al Cowlings, to whom it originally belonged. It changed hands several times over the years and even appeared on an episode of the reality show Pawn Stars. So I th the the Bronco I just thought did? that was. The Bronco, yeah. It ended up at a, um, it was later bought by some people. As one of them was Simpson's former agent. Uh, it spent years in a Los Angeles parking garage before finally finding a home at a, the Alcatraz East Crime Museum in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, uh, where it sits alongside Bundy's Beetle and uh, wow. the, a, a, the 1933 Essex Terraplane that belonged to gangster John Dillinger. And a 1934 Ford prop car used in the bloody death scene at the end of the film, 1967 film, Bonnie and Clyde. So he, we talked about his acting career and he was like, what was he in? The Naked Gun movies. He's a credited actor in 38 different movies, only three of which are actual documentaries about him. Like he actually had a long acting career. I'm sure he was great too in every single Until one of them. Until 1994. How many Oscars did he win? Not not many, as far as I know. All right. Uh, tell me a little bit about CSF before we get into some other news. Yeah, let's talk about CSF. They offer cooling solutions with a rich history. They've always been at the forefront of quality products for a fair price. They had their history and the company stretches for over decades. The highest performance and OEM plus cooling systems on the market. They offer over 3,000 different cooling applications for the most popular makes and models on the road from classic copper and brass radiators for Land Cruisers, Jeeps, Datsuns, all the way to vintage 80s Mercedes, BMW, Audi, Porsche, and of course, new vehicles, electric vehicle, also applications. It runs the gamut. Check out their expanding classic series lineup and be sure to check them out at csfrace.com or on social media. All right. So I read this this title of this next article and I couldn't figure out exactly what it meant. So obviously then I had to okay. it read it and it turns out it's interesting. Toyota will crush land speed record setting Prius. OK, I, I thought like, I didn't was know it there like, was one. Well, here, I'll, I'll show it to you. Um, I read it as that they had a land speed record crushing Prius. Oh, <laughs> so I couldn't. Here it is. I don't know if you can see it or not. You'll have to let me know. I um, I clicked on it myself. I can't see yeah, it. You can, so, you can yeah, see it's, it there. it's it's a land speed record Prius, like a salt. Yeah, there's flat, yep, salt racer. flat Prius right there. And there's also a another vehicle that we're going to talk about, too. Um, OK, everybody else. But you're right. The, using the term crushing next to record is like, oh, it's 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 crushing the record. No, they're actually crushing the car, supposedly. In an expected turn of events that might crush the spirits of car enthusiasts as much as the cars themselves, Toyota has decided to bid a not-so-fond farewell to a couple of its museum pieces. Yes, you heard it right. Toyota is turning its heritage into scrap metal, including a <laughs> land speed record-setting Prius and its museum mate, a classic Cressida. And the Cressida is, like, just kind of cool. Yeah, it it's is. not that special. Like, it has different uh, speakers in the door cards. It's Seventy-eight. Like yeah. The 2003 Prius, a true trailblazer in the hybrid world, true, once hit a breezy 130.794 miles per hour at the 2004 Bonneville Speed Week. That's uh, top, it? Well, top speed's 105. Um, uh, this yeah, week like, wasn't... It, it has full, like, aerodynamic, like, smoothie wheels and, like, why... You'd think you it would have gone faster it doesn't have if they're that gonna much going to on. It looks well, it has, pretty it's stock lower, other than It the, has a smoothie wheels. Like, okay, so you're saying it's that's just all a you stock can say. car. Not okay. really. Uh, they did do some stuff to it. Like, it has a roll cage in it, I'm pretty sure. And to be fair, when it set the hybrid record, what else was it going against? Yeah, I guess. An I escape okay, hybrid? Anyways. Uh, the car was driven by Prius chief engineer Shiyuki Hori, Toyota North America's then VP of Technical and Regulatory Affairs, Fumaki, Fumiaki, Kobayashi, and car and driver writer Aaron Robinson. The Skunk Works, let's not get carried away, team spent just two months <laughs> modifying the hybrid, 
gutting the interior while adding a racing seat, harness, and roll cage. I could gut the interior a lot faster than two months. The suspension was lowered by five inches, and it rolled on wow. special Goodyear tires made specifically for land speed record attempts. According to See, Toyota, they also they also re-geared it, the final drive. Yes. That's why I'm like, yeah. why isn't it not going any faster? Well, they didn't really add much power. Um, they just True. changed the voltage. It went from 500 to 550, so it could rev higher, I guess. Okay. I thought that would generate more power, but it just says, so this yeah. could rev higher, and then they changed the gearing. The Prius's unprecedented result opened a new hybrid class at Bonneville at a time when the gasoline electric technology was relatively new. So, yeah, anyway, they, they're crushing it. Um, I actually sent an email to, uh, embarrassingly enough, uh, do you know who makes the Prius? Toyota. For some reason, my my brain was so broken that I sent an email to Honda oh, no. asking them why they were crushing this car. And the lady oh, just God, emailed Chris. me back going, uh, wrong oh, manufacturer. God, we don't make the Prius. And I emailed her back being like, well, I hope you had a good <laughs> laugh. And she said, it's Monday. Don't worry about it. Oh. I what I was thinking. I've, obviously, I know that Honda doesn't make the Prius. Anyway. I, I, well, I did also not. email uh, Toyota and they never got uh -huh. back. So I'm trying to figure out why are they crushing this thing? I'm sure it's a prototype. It probably doesn't have a VIN number, but surely you can yeah. sell this thing to a private seller and not just crush it. Apparently, the Cressida was mint. But sadly, when uh, when they asked if the cars were for sale, they were denied. They cannot even be parted out. The facility is under strict orders to crush the cars. Um, I don't know. Just seems really, really, really sad that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I've, really care I've about that. this car, but no, I, I've heard that from several other times that like if a vehicle is pre-production and doesn't have a VIN, it gets crushed. Like it cannot exist. It has to be destroyed, which is bizarre to me. I don't know. Uh, it's just why not keep it in the museum then? Right. It doesn't have to be road legal. Maybe they're getting rid of the museum. I have no idea. Um, we have new engine regulations for F1 in 2026. And yeah, uh, normally we kind of knew this was coming, but now we know what they are. We know what oh, okay. what they have changed. Um, the 2026 regulations maintain the commitment to sustainability <laughs> with fuels that will be uh, fully sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> However, the engines are evolving to be more efficient, still capable of delivering a whopping 1000 plus horsepower, but using less fuel. You're going to laugh. Part of this is I. Oh, boy. Okay. However, the engines, uh, blah, blah, blah. The headline grabber this time around is undoubtedly the quote override mode okay this isn't just a fancy button to make the car go faster it's a significant boost in power that temporarily allows drivers to hit speeds of up to 220 miles per hour i think right now you see around 200 is like mm -hmm. when you watch some racing it's depending on the track it seems like it's like 200 this surge comes from dialing back the combustion engines output and supercharge hmm. the electrical component from 150,000 kilowatts to 350,000 kilowatts. The result, a burst of 470 horsepower from the electric side alone. So what have we done here, Jake? We basically have made an electric car. We are on a slippery slope. This is like we are standing. There's a hose running on a muddy hill and we are standing looking at it. We have just taken our first step. We have scaled back the combustion <sighs> engine and increased the uh, the we're, we're, dude the electric motor. What's four hundred seventy kilowatts in horsepower? It's, me, it's a weird, this. yeah. So Stupid I don't. Europeans. All right, six hundred thirty horsepower. So we're at six hundred thirty horsepower. This is but it's scaled down, and we're scaling up the electric. I feel like this is the slippery. Slope. Why? Why? Why scale down? the internal combustion motor like if, if this what is pushed why? past or whatever they're calling it well it says the surge so you're making the if it's the not pushed gas to pass motors, though we don't know what it is we only okay. know that override mode exists we don't know how it will be activated or used on track we have no clue we don't okay. know if this is pushed to pass we don't know this is something that's either gonna be way, like either way this is a mode that makes more power but why are they then reducing the power output from the internal combustion engine? Because they have a limit on the power they can make. So if they're going to increase oh, the power of the electric motors, they're going to decrease I the didn't combustion get engine. That. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I didn't understand that. They're adding lambda sensors. What's okay. a lambda sensor, Jake? Lambda sensor is like an O2 sensor, right? Lambda. Apparently, we've had these since the 80s. Yeah. 
They will be now positioned in each exhaust secondary or in the turbine tailpipe. They must measure the air fuel ratio in the engine exhaust gases. I cannot believe they that have we did not O2 have O2 sensors. sensors. They, of course, they did. That's weird. It, it's okay. a new addition like, of the regulation not. that these are these are there. They're positioned. <laughs> what, it's it's, it's there. just cutting edge technology here. Just yeah, cutting edge. This weird. is an O2 sensor, guys. I always thought F1 was was special. Yeah, it, it is like any. the cutting edge, but apparently it's not. Okay. Well, tell me about tell me about Petrolbox. What do you got? Petrolbox is your monthly service made specifically for the automotive enthusiast. Each month, they carefully select items, including tools, detailing supplies, apparel, garage gear, stickers, and publications to be sent right there to your doorstep. It's a curated selection of latest and greatest gear in the industry. And there's actually two different levels of subscription to choose from. The Petrobox Basic costs less than 20 bucks a month, while the Petrobox Premium gets you even more gear for $39.95 a month. Check them out at mypetrolbox.com, and you can also always use the code OVERCREST. That'll get you $6 off your first month at order. Miles Hudson, known for his mm-hmm. Dodge Charger Hellcat SRT mm. dubbed. I, don't, I wish locally... It would be kind of cool if, like, my car had a nickname locally. Like, oh, yeah, there's the... There's no, the, it doesn't. It would be kind of neat. This like, is the whole thing about... You can't about... give yourself a nickname. But if someone else gave your car a nickname, like, that happened all the time with old muscle cars. Like, you'd be like, oh, that's the... Like, that's race the cars. Or, yeah, Even, that's like, the guys that would go drag race down, like, downtown, their cars would get nicknames. And they... and, yeah. and they. Yeah. This guy's uh, SRT Hellcat is dubbed the Belltown Hellcat. Which is a super lame name. I probably could have came up with something better, but yeah, and maybe it's he gave it just a Hellcat. Yeah, maybe like, he gave it the name to himself. I don't know, but I think it'd be cool to have a nickname. Um, you can't give a nickname to your own car. You're and just you, and you okay. Should. Hold on. You're just saying this because now you're hoping someone will give your car a nickname and it'll catch on. You can't do that either. No, no, that is the dumbest thing ever. This is like giving your car a name. This is no different. I don't like, like doing what you're that talking. Either. No, be like, oh yeah, this is. Well, you you did do Wendy. that. Jersey. 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 Aud- Audrey. Yeah. Aubrey or something. Right? And then I realized yeah. it was stupid. It's so stupid, Chris. Like, they even yes. talk about this on Top Gear. Like, you, you can't name your car. It's That's really almost dumb. as stupid and as this people is... that call their pets kids or that they are parents. I can't yeah, that's really dumb. stand when people are like, yeah, I'm a dog dad. No, you're not. You own a dog. All right. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, police reports indicate don't that name Chris's car. Do not do it. Or if it's going to be a name, it's got to be something really, really dumb to be embarrassing. Miles Hudson, known for his Dodge Hel- Charger Hellcat SRT, dubbed the Belltown Hellcat, has been prohibited from driving his vehicle following charges of reckless driving. Despite the legal uh-huh. action, Hudson has continued to attract attention for the noise and speed of his vehicle, accumulating further traffic citations. Uh huh. So he still has his driver's license. But he's not allowed to drive his Hellcat. Police Wait, reports really? indicate that Hudson was pulled over in Seattle's Soto neighborhood on March 30th after officers were alarmed by the deafening noise of his engine. During a subsequent deafening. stop, <laughs> let's describe deafening. Is it like, like okay? Because li- like if you're gonna take it literally, deafening is very very loud. Like, it is extremely loud. The decibels required to literally deafen you. Yeah. is a lot a lot my more version than of any... deafening and someone in the seattle soto neighborhood that thinks they have a special connection to mother earth herself are completely different <laughs> they're, they're they're not the same at all during a subsequent twaf, traf, traffic traffic stop. traffic stop <laughs> <laughs> traffic is what you I'm, see on the looney tunes <laughs> <laughs> doing a subsequent traffic stop on april 2nd <laughs> hudson expressed excitement when an officer recognized him from his instagram videos where he boasts over seven hundred thousand followers jake why however as of this week the 20 year old is no longer permitted to drive the hellcat which has been a source of annoyance for belltown residents and beyond due to its loud revving and speeding hudson pleaded uh-huh. not guilty to two counts of reckless driving in seattle municipal court on tuesday so we don't know the outcome of this yet. Maybe we can do a follow up. The charges okay. stem from a February Instagram video showing Hudson racing another Dodge Charger at speeds of 107 miles per hour. I feel like that's almost like uh, Austin Powers. Where he's like one million. Yeah. You expect him to be driving a lot faster. I've 
hit 107 multiple okay. times. Well, as yeah, part as part of his release conditions, Hudson is forbidden from committing any criminal violations, driving without a valid driver's license and insurance, and driving the Hellcat. His attorney, okay, Shelly so Anderson, questioned the necessity of the vehicle restriction, arguing that it would hinder his ability to work. Anderson declined further comment when contacted by the Seattle Times. Judge Andrew Simmons upheld the restriction for the Hellcat, but allowed Hudson to drive other vehicles. You know what they should have done? It should have been like Top Gear where they have the like the, F, the Safari Special, the African one where the <laughs> and, Beatles. And you have be the, the hey, car. Yeah, yeah, you have to drive a Prius instead. Yeah. You have yep. to drive a Prius instead of this. This thing. is OK. This is very bizarre. And I'm actually questioning the legality of this because it it is. I could see them punishment. saying, well, it clearly I could see them saying the car is not road legal as is, right? Because it's apparently doesn't have exhaust up to whatever, you know, regulations or whatever else. That would make sense. You have to make yep. the car road legal again. But just saying you can't, you can't drive, drive a car. It. How is that legal? That can't be legal. Can someone else drive thing. the car? Like, why can't his buddy get in the car and do the exact same thing? That's legal. That's I, ridiculous. And it, so he still has his license because that would also make sense. Like, OK, we're just going to revoke your license, yep. which have you ever lost your license, Chris? Yes. Yeah, I have to. I, OK, we I don't, have, we don't need to delve so, into it. The second time I ever uh -oh. went on a date with Jesse, uh -huh. I got pulled over and ended uh -huh. up in jail. Oh, my. And I had to call her from jail saying, I'm sorry, I will not be able to make the date tonight. I well, am in jail. You weren't arrested while you were like on the date. That's what I have pictured is like you were on date oh, with her and then got pulled over and arrested. That would be probably a better story. Oh, man. I, Anyways. Just all okay. the stuff that happened in Brooklyn Park back in the day. I ended up getting it like <laughs> I had somebody I had somebody chasing me with a gun, driving after me with a gun hanging out the window in Brooklyn Park. And I was in a Passat. I was in like a Why? ABA eight bell Passat. I don't remember. I probably did some douchebag thing, probably cut him off or something, or flipped him off or whatever the case may did be. Did you know the I, guy? No, never seen him before. Oh, okay. Nice, so this wasn't up, like a personal thing. No, I ended up. Well, he like, made it personal. There were there were light, there were like stoplights, and there was cars stopped there. And I remember going, I think I was scared. Dude had a gun. I'm like, I think I can make it in between these two cars. <gasps> you like, threaded the needle. I threaded I, at like 40 miles an hour. I was like, Phew! and I threatened. That's how I got away is I Phew! right through there. The guy had a truck and I was like, Phew! it must have been was the light red. The light was red. Like, yes. Like there was cars going like this. And so you threaded yes. between them and then like this. And wow. Yeah. That's the guy had a gun. I, I was scared. I was very young. I was probably. Did you get his license old. plate? No, but the cops found him later. Good. And he okay. went to jail. So. Yeah, I would imagine that's. Yeah, that's brandishing a deadly weapon. Yeah. Jake. Um. Yeah. Jake, have you ever heard yeah. of the Drivers Club? I have heard of the Drivers Club. It is a great way to support Overcrest. It costs $5. $5. There are thousands and thousands of you that listen to this podcast and are freeloading yes. deadbeats. Deadbeats, <laughs> five bucks. It's the same cost uh -huh. as a Red Bull or a coffee. That's it. That's true. All of yeah. you guys that get and coffee hopefully... every single day, just don't get the coffee one morning, have a headache, and support your friends. Well, you don't need to have a headache, but hopefully, you know, Overcrest can, like, do more to energize you than caffeine Ooh, would. I like that. Right? I like that. Yeah. That's much more yeah. positive than me calling everybody a deadbeat, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. That's, see, that's kind of the difference, the dichotomy between us. It's just it's goes right for that's the negative. This episode <laughs> is going to continue. We're going to be talking about yes. carburetors. We're going to be talking a little yeah. bit about the air water event and what it took to yep. plan that and put that together. Ooh, and like uh, yeah, we'll keep going here. Some Everybody else, we will see you next week. I I'm going to play you a clip. You, you are smart because you made You're it. smart. <laughs> I'm going to play you a clip. And this is, uh, this is from my Instagram. You're doing stuff like this and you're trying to diagnose these stupid carburetors you think oh well it's doing this little thing so then is it the idle circuit or man it's driving a little bit like this is it in the progression circuit is it the main circuit does it run does it run a little bit better if it's wide open throttle is it better at idle it's <laughs> it's just a constant constant menagerie 
of accessing historical knowledge of other times carburetors have fucked me over. That's what owning carburetors is. What fucked me last time and how does it apply to my newfound knowledge of how I'm being fucked again? That's it. That's carburetors in a nutshell. You want to deal with that? Get a pair.